Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel Lynn Lindsay. Rachel Lynn Lindsay is hydrated. You got a big water. Hydrated. Hydration station. Hydrated. And in the process of washing my hair. You know what I mean? So, oh, so you got the whole little thing there? I got I got some um, hair oils, a concoction that Kalika cooked up for me. So I'm letting it marinate in my hair with this hair wrap on right now before I go wash it. Did So did you fuck your kitchen up too? Because that should be fucking up the kitchen. You laugh, it's true. That shit be fucking up the kitchen, man. You end up making a witch's brew. I'm, okay, I'm, first of I'm, all, I'm I literally thought popcorn. you meant the back of the head. Oh, you thought, I thought you meant the back of oh, the I'm head. I'm talking about the actual <laughs> kitchen. I was like, no, it's not. Uh -huh. um, I don't do it in the kitchen. Where you do it? Well, I mean, she she made it, so mm -hmm. it's in little bottles for me. Did you pay her? So, like, she wouldn't take money. You're not here working for free. God damn, man. <laughs> like... <laughs> We trying to. We, it's we, called being a friend. It's called being a friend. She made it. She made herself some. She made it for me. I'm using it. Listen, that's what friends are for. That's what friends are for. What you got going on this weekend? We are going out of town. Okay, you're in. You're in. Brian. Ooh, I have burp. Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian. Brian's nephew is getting married. So. We're going for a, a little wedding, quick getaway. You burp a lot. Be nice, see the family, Brian's side of the family. You burp a lot. You ever told you that before? No, but um, I'm typically gassy. That lets me know that you're farty. You're a farty person. No, that's the way they come out of me, through burps. That, that's people. When people say that, it's cap. It's true. It's like when people say that, it's cap. I think, number one, you might force them as burps. But I want to challenge you to let yourself fart. Listen. Also, I'm drinking water. Whenever I drink water like this, it makes me burp. It is true. Anyways, what you got going on this weekend? How's the book tour going? Let us know. Fill us in. You know, Thought Warriors are excited. So I've been doing, I did the live signing on Tuesday. I did the Breakfast Club yesterday. I did Sway in the Morning today. I did uh, DJ Academics on Tuesday. Shout out to Academics. We got drunk. It was a shit oh. show. Uh, I did, and then uh, my pal Amy Schumer um, had me yesterday. She was like, "Hey, do you want to be in a sketch?" So, do you want to be in a okay. sketch? And I was like, "Sure." So, I did a sketch yesterday with Amy Schumer. Didn't end up leaving till around uh, three a.m. and didn't oh, wow. end up leaving academics to around three a.m. the day before. Then having to wake up and do interviews. So, I'm doing it, but like, I got to meet Cara Delevingne. <gasps> mm -hmm. Amber Tamblyn. Look at you. Look at the look Rose at the Bud. circles you're rolling in. He's too fancy for us, y'all. I'm not rolling the circles because I'm a square, baby. Squares don't roll in circles. We do our square thing, you know? And even though I am uh, tired, burning the candle at the burst, both ends right now, I'm still going to allow myself to go exist in Central Park, which is right up the street here, during the sunset hours, sunset in Central Park. Oh, you're in you're in that area in New York. That's my favorite area in New York to stay in. Oh, for real, not me. My favorite area is the Lower East Side, the East Side okay. with my friends, the East Side, uh, the East Side with my people, East Side, uh, what, yeah, uh, 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 uh. Not sure what happened. Um, so when I, you look at me. See, this is the thing with Ra with you, Rachel. You, Rachel, Trudy, Donnie Beecham. When a song just comes out of me, y'all can't y'all can't make me suppress it. That's not right. Okay? We don't. We can't. We try. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> you you force it on us. There's there's no stopping it, and we just have to sit there and take it. And that's why you get those facial expressions. Every once in a while, you hit you. It's it's like you strike gold. But most of the time, I'm not gonna lie. How about this? All those songs sound alike. How they all this? sound alike. Just a different words, same beat. I'm like every other songwriter. Then, if I'm being honest, because you make ten songs on the album, 
Two of them are really good. The rest, the rest of them get you through the album. You know what I'm saying? You might have five ones that are really dope. But I'm writing a lot of songs that got a lot of ideas. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of things mm-hmm. in this head, in this noggin. Uh, should have made a song up about the book. That's what you should have been doing. Fat, Crazy, and Tired. The Tales of the of Transformation. Moment has passed, but I'm just saying what you should have done. I probably should have. Do I probably should have. But you know what I found out? Maybe you found the same thing. Talking about the book so much, do you ever feel like it cheapens the feelings that you that you have in the book? Did you ever feel like you were selling people your vulnerability and after a while, did it always feel good to you? Um, I No, but I got sick of myself. I kind of got did sick. Did you get, I, I get sick of myself too? I'm, I got sick of myself. Mm-hmm. Like it just sounded, obviously it's real. You know, those are your words, your feelings, your stories, your memories, whatever they may be, your thoughts, opinions. But I got sick of myself and it felt a little um, obnoxious at times. God damn it, it sure does. You know, yeah. I, I think I like to talk about me, but I, 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 it's not as much as I thought I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right? Right? And a lot of the questions become the same and you're like, you, you know, you try to think of creative ways to answer. I don't know. It's a lot. But it's wor- it, It's good. I'm glad well, no, you're I'm, I'm happy store. that people care and I'm very grateful that mm-hmm. people care, but... You know, there's some really think there's some really tough things to talk about in the book, and some of this stuff I've become an expert in shoving it all the way down deep, and letting it come out in song, and letting it come out in overeating, and not having to talk about it. It's like sometimes it's like therapy by interview, and I'm so happy. Oh, that absolutely, ev- therapy. Yeah, so happy that everybody's down with me. But um, you know, it's tough. Um, you excited later on in the show about animal, animal, animal games, animal, animal games. You excited about that? I'm curious. You're curious. You don't like animals, do you? Let's be honest. Stop. Don't stop. I have an animal, even though I like to refer to him as that. Yeah. Yes. I have a, a, a son. It's hard for me to think of Bozeman as an animal. Do you know that I miss the affection of the dog? Like, but like Bozeman is like he's not. I don't look at him as a dog. People, people, it offends me when people say that I should do things that that other dogs do when it comes to Bozeman. Bozeman isn't a dog. Do you understand that Bozeman sees me on the couch and comes and gets on the couch and curls up to me, puts his head on me, and like you know what's up? What the, he's not. He's like a he's a a thing that is my companion. He's not. I, he's I a, he, he might not be a human in the traditional sense, but I feel his soul. So it's hard to think of him as a human, as a dog. You know, he's not. Mm-hmm. He's not. Don't make. Don't do it. Don't. Don't let people make you do that. I get offended when people actually say dog. R- Rachel, what's your favorite kind of cake? Now, pound. Uh, you like a little icing on that or what? No, my mom makes the best homemade pound cake. There is no icing. Yeah, I bet. Boy, I tell you, pretty hair look like she can make some pound cake, man. <laughs> she really can. Pretty hair. I, I can't even lie. I want to eat <laughs> at the judge at Pretty Hair's house. You come to Dallas, listen, the door is open. You know they love you. They would love to have you over. My mom will cook you anything you want. All right, so I have a, uh, speaking of that, I have a, I have a demand of you. This is what you have to do. This is what you have to do, Rachel. Mm, Rachel. What? There's something you have to do. You have Damn. to come to uh, New Orleans Sunday, May 8th. That's literally tomorrow. That's not tomorrow. How much? You have to, I don't care. Like you, I, I, like all everything you're about to say is whatever. Next Friday, you and Brian catch a flight, flying to New Orleans. Everybody's going to be there. Like, it, it, like I'm, I'll be in New Orleans for two weeks shooting hip hop homicides, right? Oh, two weeks. Wow. Yeah. And so jam packed episode. And so okay. what are you doing? <laughs> are you selling it there? Are you selling the episode? It's a jam packed episode of Hip Hop Homicide. Two weeks. You haven't spent two weeks, not even in your beloved Chicago. Have I was there. Two, I was there 10 days, though. Okay. All right. Um, so it's like two weeks. It might be the same amount of time. It might be like 10 days because I think it is because I leave the third. I think we're coming back to 14. So it's more like uh, like 11 days. Um, and that weekend, a lot of people are going to be down in New Orleans, right? Uh, Steve is going to be there. Uh, uh, Kalik is coming. My mom is going to be there. And we're going to savage the fucking block that weekend in New Orleans. Savage the fucking 
block. Player proof Orleans. crew? Oh yeah, they're coming down. And that and that Sunday, my mom is gonna be, even though it's Mother's Day, she has agreed and she wants to slave over a hot hot oven to make Ooh. you niggas food. We talking egg and bow. We're talking a fried thing. We're talking maybe a seven up cake or a German chocolate oh, situation. Oh, seven up cake is right up there too. So wow, so it's a three hour flight. I know that it's short notice, but let's look at two things. Number one, I'm bad at this type of stuff. You know that. That's the first thing. I'm not great at knowing yeah. what I'm going to be. You know that. Number two, you're yes. rich. And so the cost of the flight isn't gonna bother you. Let's just keep it real. Money bags, Lindsay. And then, <laughs> and then the 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 second thing is, it's only a three hour flight. It's booming to New Orleans. Brian, Rachel, fun times. Commander's Palace will go on a fucking riverboat. We'll do all kinds of stuff, and then you guys can come oh. back. You guys can come back. You're not coming. I can tell by your voice. No. So we have this thing. We're in the middle of sweeps during the month of May. So it's hard for me to be able to get away because I got to work Monday morning. If there was a way I could work from New Orleans, I would do it. Can we move this? Can we move it to Saturday? Well, Saturday night we're getting busy too. So here's the thing. So you, if you don't want to stay for the dinner, that's cool. But Saturday night is the night that we're getting busy because I'll have getting off. Busy. I'll have seriously. I'll have off from hip hop homicides that um that Sunday. So those Saturday night is the is going to be the night on the town where we go nuts. You know what I mean? When I'm telling you, when I say we're going to go nuts, oh, we're going to go nuts. It's going to be so stupid. Do, it, Rachel, do you understand what I'm talking about this here? Is, this is so I'm talking about tempting be, me. Being to, stupid. Just think about to, it. Maybe you can't make it. Go. Maybe you can't make it. But if you can't make it, then we have to do a separate New, New, uh, New Orleans trip because my mom really wants I'm to meet you. S- I, I, I want to meet her too. I'm, yeah. Will she be there Saturday? Uh, yeah, to be honest with you, I, I would assume that she will get a tent and camp out in New Orleans for the entire time that I'm there. She's super excited for <laughs> back here. I've, let me think about this because a Saturday, perhaps. Yeah, maybe so. Perhaps we could do. Maybe, maybe. I love it. I love My parents just got back from New Orleans. I think, love a good New Orleans trip. You think that they made love while they were there? We've been through this type of conversation Maybe they did. I don't know. I don't ask those type of questions, nor do I think about them, man. I know. I'm just saying. I knew. I know that. I people, just no, no. You're not. I don't want to hear anything <laughs> you're saying. Come on, it's man. A, it's a romantic <laughs> city. It's a romantic city. Do you think? Actually, do you, I don't think Ro- New Orleans is romantic like that at all. And I love New Orleans. But you don't think the judge goes and puts on a robe and gets all oiled up and and and, and talks? You don't think that that Wait, happens, D- Donnie? What's the big deal of the day? <laughs> the, judge. the judge. You know, they, you know, oh, do you think he ever wears his, does he, oh, wait a minute. What? Does your dad wear a judge robe? Yes. Oh my God, this is the illest nigga that's ever lived. It just dawned what, on me. Did you not think he was? I don't know why I wouldn't put this together. It just <laughs> dawned on me that he, for a job, puts on that robe. That is the illest shit ever. He, he ever. Robe. And I'm sure if you visit the courtroom, he'd let you put on the robe. He'd let you sit sit up there. Bang the gavel? the gavel. Now, now I'll just let you know something. You're kind of living out the role play that probably happens. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm just, uh, Enough. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> take a break and come back with the big deal of the day. <laughs> All right. Supreme court, the U S Supreme court, the highest court in the land where they wear robes as well. They seem sympathetic to a coach who claims the right to pray. The U.S. Supreme Court heard another church state case on Monday in which the court's conservative supermajority appears to be moving towards a greater accommodation for religious expression in public schools. The case was brought by a public high school football coach who claims the right to kneel and pray on the 50-yard line at the conclusion of each game, joined by those of his players that want to participate. School authorities in the town of 
Bremerton, Washington told coach Joseph Kennedy to stop his midfield praying because it violated school policy. Their policy is for school employees to neither encourage nor discourage religion. The school district and the lower court said Kennedy's public praying amounted to a school endorsement of religion, and Kennedy was put on paid leave when he refused to stop. All right, Judge Sonia Sotomayor post a simple posted a series of hypothetical questions about where to draw the line of religious speech for school employees. When, if ever, can teachers pray in class? Could the school fire a coach who decides to put a Nazi swastika on his arm and claims it is a part of his religion when he goes to the middle of the field to pray? Could the school say no? Kavanaugh came back. Every player is trying to get on the good side of the coach and every parent is worried about the coach exercising favoritism in terms of starting lineups, playing time, recommendations, colleges, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet, Kavanaugh still decide, uh, decided, along with Neil Gorsuch, um, it is now time for the court to bury some of its older precedents for good. Precedents that might include the separation of church and state most prominent is a 1971 case which barred the use of taxpayer money to pay for parochial school teacher salaries and books because such expenditures would unconstitutionally entangle the government with religion in legal shorthand the case is seen as a ban on the endorsement of religion so there are two sides to this one is the school board one is uh the coach is lawyers rachel this is an interesting one you love god but what are your thoughts? <laughs> um, it is interesting because, yes, you said I love God, but there also is the separation. The, there's a separation from of church and state. And the way the Supreme Court has ruled in the past and the way that it seems like they're leaning towards ruling in this case is in favor of Christianity without explicitly saying it's Christianity. And I think that this case is interesting because it's this whole like freedom of religion versus freedom from religion. And I think that questions, the questions that interesting enough, Justice Kavanaugh was asking about the coach are really what are important because you have to look at who's the one who's expressing their faith or their religion. So the coach is kneeling on the 50 yard line after every game in prayer. He's doing it by himself. And if people want to gather, they can. They don't have to. They're not forced to. But the coach is in this position of power. So if you're a student who's extremely impressionable or, you know, um, one us uh, being coached by him, you look at him and what he's doing and you think that you'll find some sort. I don't know how it's it's inevitable for you to not think that you'll find some sort of favor by also taking a knee and praying with him. Mm hmm. Because of his because of his position of power, you have to consider that when making this type of decision. It's not like he's bowing and saying grace before a meal at lunch or before a meal with the team. You know, he's expressing his religion. And I think that it also takes into account that as a country, we deem Christianity as acceptable. But I think if this was another religion that was being expressed on the 50-yard line, this wouldn't even be a discussion. I think that they would rule against it. And yeah, maybe like as, you know, maybe people expect for me to say one thing be because I do, mm. you know, have uh, I am a Christian and I do love God. But I think that if the law of the land is separation of church and state, this to me doesn't really separate it when you look at who is expressing their religion. And if it was another way around, it wouldn't be OK. Mm. And I think that that's the only way to do it, because if you look at the Establishment Clause under the First Amendment, it also prohibits government's act government actions that unduly favor one religion over another. And it seems that Christianity is favored in this way as opposed to other religions that aren't necessarily viewed in a general sense as acceptable in the way that Christianity is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I just don't know how... I think this is a tougher case than maybe they initially thought that it was going to be. Uh, but if they rule in favor of the coach, I think they're ruling in the side of the right, which mm -hmm. we know that the court is now right leaning. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're ruling in favor of Christianity. So the, you can't, you can't, coach can't do this. Just can't I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll connect a couple of things that people may have thought that I can't connect. Uh, I'll connect this with Louis CK masturbating. Okay. So, 
Louis C.K. asked every single woman that he masturbated in front of if he could do that. He asked them. So you might be so so there are some people that go, hey, somebody asked if they can masturbate in front of you. Uh you say yes, that's consent. Aha, not so fast. What if you feel like you can't say no? Now, there are, of course, a bunch of people out there that might have the ability to say no, right? They might go, oh, I don't want to do that. But what if you're a young female comic and you feel like if you tell Louis C.K. he can't jack off in front of you, then that means you don't get to go on the next show. That in some kind of way puts a distance in between you and C.K. If you see the coach praying and you see the team go pray because the coach is praying, you become the one kid that didn't pray. And if the coach lives his life by the edict of God, then maybe you might feel like God told the coach, don't play you. Or if you fumble the ball, maybe the coach will tell you, you fumbled because yeah. you don't have Jesus in you helping you hold on tight to the ball. Or maybe the team isn't performing as well as the team is supposed to be performing because, aha, the team is falling out of favor with God. I'm not saying I never prayed on the field. I did it all the time. And not only would I do it, but after the game, a group, you've seen this all the time, groups of athletes, they pray together. And I'm not saying that the coach couldn't join a group of athletes praying. This is a weird thing. I mean, I guess he could. Actually, no, he can't. No, he could join, I, I, but he couldn't lead it. Uh, he couldn't lead it. Because that's just going to be out. To me, I, I would, I would, I would prefer that expressions like that don't involve don't involve employees of the school. I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I would prefer because here's my thing. Of course, if this was Satanism, or if this was Jesus, if this was Islam, oh my Lord! If there was some coach saying. right now, we 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 the Fox News Sharia law takes over Tallahassee High School. You know what I mean? So if this was a different religion, of course. But beyond the what aboutisms of it, is that the the separation of church and state has never really been as much of a part of Americana as we would have liked it to be, but it exists for a very good reason. And that reason is so that pre people f feel free not to make decisions, but people feel free to not do something. People feel feel free feel feel like it doesn't hurt them to uh, uh, if they don't want to be a part of organized religion and they don't want to be under the thumb of a religion and have that religion. Uh, bleed into political um, decisions that the government might make. And I'll and I tell you who agrees with me about this. God. Let's um. go with the fact right now. I believe in God. You believe in God. Let's go with the fact right now that God is real. There are a lot of our followers and listeners out there who don't believe in God and we respect your ability uh, and we respect your your the way that you live your life as much as we hope you respect the way that we live our lives but if a divine being created every single person that's in existence and every single thing in the universe and the galaxies and he put it into people to give them the free will to decide whether or not he wanted to follow whether we wanted to follow it or not uh when i when i refer to god i will say it sexless i'm not saying that whatever so if god gave man free will then man is compelled to give man free will and man is also compelled to to protect the free will of men and that doesn't go against god that is actually being godly because god if you believe in such a thing doesn't want you to do it under persecution there's supposed to be love, connection, and intent in your relationship with the higher power. And you shouldn't have to pray because you think that your coach is going to be off on you if you don't pray. The reality is this is school. All right. If you want to be in a locker room and you, you want to tell people, hey, if you believe in a God, it's your time to pray to him right now. If you believe whatever it is, if you want to tell people, if you want to get them together, whatever you want to throw stuff out there, it's cool. But any organized, any organized sort of team activity around prayer, you just can't have it in the school. There are schools where you can go and get that. There are schools where you can sure. go where there's a class, religion class, where everything is based around it. But this is not one of them. This school isn't for people who've made a decision to go to a, a, a school that has religion in it. This school is for, for everyone to attend. At the same time, it's a public school, 
public government funds and you can't have it. The separation of church and state is a central tenet to American freedom. It just is. And I'm not going to be blinded because it's my religion. I'm going to say no. Coach, I'm sure it's a great guy. I'm sure it's a great guy. But I'm telling you right now, stop your hubris. This to me, stop your hubris. It'll be interesting because if depending on how they decide and a lot of people are speculating that they will side with the coach, will you open up the door for other coaches to be able to do the same thing under a different, a totally different religion? Will they end up revisiting it? Will they, I mean, that's what you're doing at this point, depending on how they, they, they decide it. Basically you could, you know, the coach was fired for what he did. So he says he was discriminated against because of his religion. Well, then other people can make that same argument that doesn't fall under Christianity. He wasn't without so he wasn't oh, wait. But he's 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 capping. He wasn't fired because he prayed. He was fired because he refused to stop praying. So like I, I love that. Like I was, right. yeah. But that's <laughs> right. That but that, I'm just saying what he's alleging in his in his lawsuit. Was and and you know it was it came from this side and the ninth the circuit the ninth circuit ruled against him no but he's saying that's what he's alleging right yes not because the school is saying not because he um not because he of his religion but because what he refused to stop doing yes but that is what but that's what he's alleging in this suit so I just think it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out I do disagree with you though I think that if a group of students do decide to, um, like a group of students, let's say 30 students get on the field from both teams and circle around the middle and decide to pray and coaches join them. That happens all the time. I think that's totally different from a coach being the first one out there and leading. And let's not forget that more facts of this is that he was leading people in prayer in the locker room and everything. So there's a lot more to it than just what he was doing on the field. But it's totally different from a coach being the first one out there and leading and doing it by himself and people thinking, oh, well, if I do this, you know, like maybe it'll win favor with the coach. Then students on their own volition doing it and, and coaches just joining in in unity. It's totally different, in my opinion. Not to me, but I can understand how you see it that way. Let me ask you a question. If all the students were in the um were in the middle of the field doing cocaine and the coach joined in, would that be okay? Well, cocaine is an illegal act to do. So you can't do that. Getting down okay. on one knee is not illegal. Well, it's, it is if you're Drake. That boy's not asking anybody to marry him. That man okay. is out here. That man's a rolling stone. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, like it, that man's a rolling stone. Let me ask you a question. Let's say if all the kids were out in the middle of the uh, the at the fifty yard line drinking, throwing back some E and J, would it be okay if the coach ran out there and joined them in that situation? Are they of age? I'm just, like, I'm asking. where are we? I'm, I want to ask you. Well, I, I want to ask you a different question. What again, if, what that if the they kids were out in, at, at the fifty yard line mugging people? Huh? What if they were mugging people? Out Another there? illegal act. Can you give me something that's not an illegal activity? What about if the kids were out at the fifty yard line having sex, Rachel? Huh? What if kids well, were frolicking? Well, public nudity. I mean, not it's, really. It's, it could be Nick, indecent it, exposure. Yeah, you can't. You can't just be getting. Come on. Can you wait? Listen. Well, can I ask you a question? Serious question. And by the way, this is all jokes, but I don't think the coach can pray. I don't think the coach should be praying mm-hmm. with the kids. I think if the kids want to pray, the kids can pray. I think the coach is an employee of the school and he shouldn't be praying on. <laughs> like he, he just shouldn't. Like, you know what I mean? If, if if the coach leaves, if the kids are going to do some organized church shit away from school, then that is what it is. But I don't think the coach should be praying with the kids. I don't. I really don't. But let me no, ask you a question. With the kid, what if he says grace? What if they get their food and he bows his head? Well, so he can say his own and grace. It's lunchtime. He can say his and own it's grace. He can't. He can't lead an organized grace. He can say his own grace. <laughs> so let me ask you this: So, if you have sex, so having sex in public is like even if you can't see anything, is that illegal? So what if there's what if there's see what I'm saying? What if you poke it out through the hole in your jeans, and okay. you got to see if is that illegal? Because what if you can't see any nudity? Is it and you're not? Is it illegal to just? Is the act of sex in public illegal, or is it the nudity aspect of it that's illegal? I think it's the nudity. Get around that. 
I'm going to be honest with you. Well, Van, good, good. Have fun figuring that out. Get, you can, you can get, a, you can get around that. There are contraptions okay. you could probably Great. put in the clothes. There are Great. all different How types. How about of people things. who want to do that? Huh? I, Didn't we say? Did wasn't that a question that if there was a crime that you would commit? And I think you said indecent exposure. Yeah. You you've clearly thought about this on multiple occasions. Mm. You sicko, sick bastard. <laughs> uh, your girl Sage Steele has sued ESPN. Mm. That's how I knew she was a white woman. I know it. Only a white woman is free enough to sue the place they work. God damn, Sage. I love that. I, I actually love that for her. <clears throat> While still employed. While still employed. She works there. While she's still suing employed, them. y'all. She was on TV today. She's suing him. She <laughs> says that the company treated her unfairly for the comments she made on the podcast interview last September. She alleges that the company breached her contract to violate her free speech rights. She was under fire after she went on uh, Jay Cutler's podcast. And she questioned the COVID-19 vaccine mandates and made comments about former President Barack Obama, Barack Obama, Barack Obama identifying as black instead of biracial. She also said female sports journalists are partly to blame for athletes making inappropriate comments about them if they dress a certain way. Sage Steele said that if you dress a certain way, a nigga can say whatever he wants to say to you. God damn it, Sage, Sage Steele, never change. Um, <clears throat> so she says she's been sidelined for prime assignments um, however, she does, however, anchor the noon Sports Center broadcast. Now, take this girl beef between you and Sage Steele off the table. If, in fact, she was sidelined from important stuff because of her opinions on these things, isn't that wrong? If she, well, mm-hmm. if she was retaliated against, yeah. which is mm-hmm. what she's claiming. Yeah. Then yeah, I mean it's wrong if she's retaliated, but I just don't think that that's what happened here. You can catch Sport uh, Sage Still on your TV five out of seven days a week, hosting one of their flagship shows, and that's Sports Center. Mm-hmm. So help me understand here. Yeah, she had to sit out for like a week or two, but that's because she made disparaging comments. It's not because of what she said about being black or Barack Obama. Black. It was because what she. It's because of what she said about COVID-19 and how she criticized the very company that she works for. That's why she said she had to sit out. It had nothing to do with that. And she's also claiming that her colleagues don't like her and they bully her. They been ha- they haven't liked you for a while, Sage. It had nothing to do with these particular <laughs> comments. They haven't. They haven't. Hello, she made news a couple of years ago during 2020 when she accused them of not including her in their segment regarding George Floyd that she wanted to be a part of. And she called out two of her black coworkers and said that they stopped her from being a part of it. Well, no, they stopped you because you really haven't expressed opinions that show that you're aligned with what was going to be presented in that special. My God, Jay Cutler called you the Candace Owens of of um, ESPN, and she laughed at it, and then complimented Candace Owens. If you t- if you call me that, I'll be like, I'm, what am I doing wrong? Please tell me what I said. Mm-hmm. How can I fix it? That's the worst thing you could say. <clears throat> you might as well call me Satan. Yeah, oh, I thought you said you might as well call me Sage. I was about to say, <laughs> um, Sajin. Sajin, Sajin still. <laughs> uh <laughs> We have this in the rundown, but I have to be honest with you. I don't really give a fuck what happens here. I think it, I think with Sage, yeah, I, is she? Are you not going to slap a percentage on her? Percentage of what? A white man's nigga. Mm-hmm. Um, what white man's nigga percentage is Sage still? We, we we're going. It's up there, man. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It's hard to because like sometimes there's no percentage. Sometimes you just are a white man's nigga. You know what I'm saying? <gasps> Is that a hundred percent? Probably. I mean, she said that she 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 made weird hair comments. So I look. I I don't want to look. Sage. It feels. I'm gonna be honest with you. It feels weird to do the white man's nigga thing with a black woman. I don't want to feel like I'm ever attacking a black woman. Well, I'm the one who told you. Shit, listen, <laughs> if it was a black man saying this, we'd be giving a percentage. I, you know what it is about Sage. <laughs> You know what it is. And I let, feel I'll weird say doing it to a black woman. woman. I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, she's definitely over 50%. But I, you know what, I, what it is about Sage, and this is where it's disappointing, is like people who grew up watching sports and loving sports and wanting to be a part of that world 
looked up to a sage still. And I think that's what's so, like I'll remember how excited I was the first time I met her and then she makes those comments to me that she made. And I'm like, whoa, that's not the person I thought that you were. So I think that it's just What did she so, say again? What did she say again? That she was thrilled that I chose somebody who wasn't black. And like, she was more excited to talk to me about the fact that I chose Brian and I didn't care what people thought and blah, 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 blah. Rather, and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to meet Sage Still. I majored in sports management. I focus in sports law. Like I want to be doing sports and entertainment. And here's a woman who was doing it. And I remember, and so it's just so like you, you look up to somebody and then you're like, oh wait, no, this is how you really are. And I think that's the beef that I have with Sage where it's, I know there are other young people who grew up like me who looked up to her. And then it's like, you're constantly saying disparaging comments against the community. And I think that is what, you don't stand with us. That's what's disappointing. So on the one hand, if the network, first of all, I think that, so in terms of the COVID-19 situation, I think that there was a very uh, direct sort of, um, initiative by people a very direct sort of stand that people took to police what is misinformation or disinformation about COVID-19 the vaccines and the disease and all of that stuff so to me that actually falls into a different category than whether or not people are being mean at ESPN about uh, Sage Steele's wonky race uh, uh, kind of deals if you're saying things out there that aren't true about COVID-19 and you're, uh, you're, you're, you're giving misleading statements about the vaccine you your a network that is privately owned, by the way, uh, a network that is privately owned has to step in and say, "Hey, we don't want you represent representing certain things, certain truths, or or excuse me, certain lies about things that have truthful answers to them." You know what I mean? Like, and that's just exactly. the situation. Like that that is real. And as a couple, as a as a corporation, ESPN has the right. Disney, should I say, has the right to make a decision about whether or not. They're going to allow people that work for them to go out and spread misinformation or disinformation willy nilly. As far as any other controversial opinions that Sage still might have, uh, she should be allowed to voice those on a podcast away from the company. She should be allowed to voice those. However, and I'll she be, has been right. So she should be allowed to voice those right now. If I worked at TMZ for many years, if I had, you know, I'm not even going to say that because I'm not going to uh, injure another group. Uh, making a making a um a, a hypothetical. That's what got Sean King fucked up just a listen, just a second ago. But I will say that if if you want to like free speech doesn't come without consequences. Absolutely. And if and if you want to be this type of on the other hand, right now, uh, Colin Kaepernick is fighting for his football life to get back in the NFL. Right. For free speech mm -hmm. matters. And there's a whole swath mm -hmm. of the country that agrees with Sage Steele that would say that it's okay to keep Colin Kaepernick off the field for business reasons. We got to come to some kind of logical consensus on whether or not free speech is okay or whether or not it's not okay. Because the reality of the situation is you can say whatever you want, but that doesn't mean your boss has to like it. That doesn't mean your friends have to like it. That doesn't mean that other people have to like it. In this in, in situation with Cap. I personally think that standing up for people's rights makes you should make you more valuable to your employer. But they colluded to keep this man out of the league. And I bet you a lot of Sage Still defenders would say that that's not the same as what she did. But but what what are you you making a face? Rachel, give it to me. Give me the give me the Well heat. no, I'm just like I'm like when you talk about we gotta come to some logical consensus. I think that's the whole issue that's going on in this country. You've got that sector, those people who would who would support a sage still who are illogical. I mean, just look at the way that so many issues are handled in this country. Look at the don't say gay bill. Oh, parents need to decide what that what is taught to their children. Okay, but then parents can't decide what medicine their children should have when it comes to hormonal issues. When when it comes to what's happening with with transgender rights it's like that's that's the whole thing oh but you can't tell you can't you know my body my choice with the vaccine but you can tell my body what to do when it comes to abortion that's literally the entire right it's just full of hypocrisy i have to figure it out there's some hypocrisy right. there's some right, there's some hypocrisy say. on both sides though if i'm being honest with you there, there, there I'm is. not saying the left is i'm not saying the left is free from it right. i'm just saying it just seems to be so <clears throat> 
obvious when it comes to how, how these this? laws are proposed and put out the, there. The left isn't free from it, but the right is making it their platform, the platform of hypocrisy. All right, Rach, uh, Biden is mulling significant student debt cancellation. He might cancel these student loan debts. I'm over it. Don't say, say no more. Just either fucking cancel it or don't. That, I don't that's want, not the way this is done, us. Rach. Rach, stop teasing first of us. all, there's elections coming up. And he has stop to tease you guys us. to get you guys energized to go out to the polls. First of all, don't don't be this flipping about this. This is what you goddamn wanted. You guys have what? pushed and bullied the president into doing this. And now he's going <laughs> to do it. Now this is this is we like this he's is not going to do this it. This is Biden's uh, he'll if he wants to win he'll do it. I'll be honest with you. At this point, this is his last this is his last gasp and gusto. <laughs> like uh, with with the with the prog- with the progressives he is striking out, okay? And with the black progressives he might as well be playing for look, with the black we didn't get the uh, uh, George Floyd bill. We haven't gotten it yet. Maybe we will get it one day. I wouldn't cross my fingers about it. We, voting rights is, is, is uphill battle. All of these things for 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 the president. If he wants to, if he wants to have any sort of cachet with the youths, with the youths, and with the young progressives, he needs to try to make. If not, if no, for no other reason, forget about the fact that it would, to in my opinion. Uh, invigorize a host, uh, like revitalize, should I say, or wait, can you vigorize something? Vigor? Can you vigorize? Can you invigor? It, can, is invigorize a word? I don't. Donnie? Invigorize. Like, well, how would you say? Like, so. Invigorating, invigorated. I don't know if vigor. Invigorate. Invigorize. Can you invigorize anything? I don't. I don't think you can. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that anywhere. You can, I'm going back to invigorate. I know what you can do. You can invigorize something. Um, but the fact it it would let's let's say inspire and invigorate. Ha ha! It would invigorate an entire large swath of voting eligible people, and to me, give a little jolt to the economy. Especially in the economy right now that's being plagued by record inflation, hitting people who don't have a discretionary income the hardest, right? So what I'm saying is, I think it would be a good econ- uh, economic move, and I think it would be a good move, a political move. But this is going to happen, in my opinion, specifically and only for political reasons right here. This will be a hail mary pass, and he's going to hope that some millennial living at home with their mom, or some Gen Xer living at home, Gen Xer, Gen Y, or Gen Z, or living at home with their mom is going to catch that and then take it into the voting booth with them. But at this point, if he wants any, 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 any sort of cachet with a certain group, he's going to have to do something about this, in my opinion. This is the last thing that he can do. It said, the president smiled and said, quote, you're going to like what I do on that. I'm looking to do something on that. And I think you're going to like what I do. Don't look anymore, Joe. Do something. Help. Get rid of the loans. I don't want to hear any more conversation about it. I just want you to do it. Don't talk about it until you're signing something, some type of executive order, using your powers, something to do more than that $10,000. And don't let it be public. (laughs) It'd be great if you could attack some of these private loans too. You want you want those help. Loans. You want those loans Joe, gone. Help. Look, now now oh. is help Joe help. <laughs> now is help, help Joe help. You were just on this man's make- neck. Um No, I'm asking. I'm just telling you be about it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want you to take any more meetings in private. I don't want to. Just do something. We've been talking about loans since before you were in the presidency. You've been do something. So let me ask you this. So uh the word is that because it doesn't seem likely that Congress would be the place to go to get something passed, that he could use some executive action to forgive at least $10,000. To you, is $10,000 going to be enough for people to uh, forgive him, for people to feel like he's got, they've gotten some No, You don't think so? No. Especially people who went to college and then people who went to private universities and then people who went on to go past college. Getting your master's, PhD, law, dental school. Like you got six figure loans. That's nothing. You a six figure nigga. I'm a six figure. That's what we should we should call people we got so look, uh, I'm not even gonna get into the song because I was about to. 
uh, what's the number then? What's the number of forgiveness if it can't all be wiped off the books by executive action? What's the number? What's, I think, what's the dollar I amount? I think it should be it should be based on how much how many your loans are, how much how many loans you have, right? So hmm. fifty might erase something for for all their whole loan, mm -hmm. but. 50 for other people might be one fourth of the amount of loans they have. If they went on to law school, dental school, like, and then you combine that, that's a lot. Wait. So it's niggas that went to law school and dental school? No, I'm saying law school or dental school. Oh, or I was about like to say, you, four you, years. you, you need to pay them loans but back. You got two that. top go, flight careers there. You a lawyer go and to a law dentist? School. <laughs> you a lawyer people and a dentist? Yeah, but you got to think about that. You're come, you, you're paid in. Lawyers, for example, right? Mm -hmm. You go to college for four years, then you go to law school. You're sick, and you took loans out. You're six figures in. Lawyers coming out, a lot of them don't make a hundred thousand dollars. So it's like, well, I'm over here struggling trying to pay these loans. I want you to think about yeah. this, Rachel. If you went to law school and dental school, you could represent you somebody. Said the wrong thing. I'm Look, so, I apologize. You could think about this. You could represent somebody in a car accident where they fuck their mouth up. And while you're representing them, you could give them a card and say, hey, I know where you can get your teeth fixed. All the way around. You could fix somebody's teeth and they could tell you they got them from an accident and you could say, you know what? Meet me at 4.30 right here because from 4.30 to fucking 6.30, I'm a lawyer. That is a hustle. I don't know why more people don't do that. Chiropractor okay, slash all, lawyer. Ky Brian should get a law degree. Whoa. Probably. If Brian got a law degree, Brian could crack people's backs and sue the motherfuckers. That you three can't do both. Why? Nobody would take his credit. He wouldn't be a credible chiropractor. They'd be like, oh, you racking up the bills to make money for yourself. No, you can't do both. You can't do both. Anyways, you can't do both. And honestly, how many people hurt their teeth? How many people hurt their teeth in a car? I'm a visionary. I don't care what. Like, I'm an idea man, Rachel. I don't care. You are a visionary, you, you know, a, but this I'm one a, ain't working. I'm an idea man. I never thought about that crossover. I, I I know a guy named Okay. There's a reason for that. His name is Okay. He has a brother named Ishim. Okay is the craziest nigga I know. Okay <laughs> is a lawyer, a doctor, and he's in the army. This nigga went to law school. Well, he probably got to pay for them. This nigga, this nigga went to law school. This nigga went to medical school, and he went to Iraq. Name me somebody else. Okay, is my guy. It's one of the smartest men I know. It's besides the fact that he's an Ohio State football fan. Name me somebody I know. Name me somebody else who went to law school, medical school, and Iraq. Who goes to all three? I don't know. I don't. I don't know that person. Who goes to all three? Yeah, no. Probably I got mean, a lot of loans too. It, it's incredible. It's incredible. But yeah, no. The to answer your original question, the loans should vary based on how many you have. All right. Uh, 50, 50 to a hundred. One last here, one last stop here in the colleges. Harvard University acknowledges its historic ties to slavery. Pledges one hundred million dollars reparations. Harvard University is dedicating $100 million to create a fund to research and redress its extensive entanglements with slavery, University President Lawrence Bacow said Tuesday. The university's attempt to reckon with the past is detailed in a report called Harvard and the Legacy of Slavery, which sounds like a band, which documents <laughs> show how the slave trade in the 17th and 18th centuries compromised a vital part of the New England economy and powerfully shaped Harvard University. Fucking Duh, niggas. Rachel, what do you think about this? Harvard wants to use some of this money to figure out what's going on. But if when, when Harvard figures out, and I'm sure that they know, by the way, the, the details um, and the extent to which they were involved in slavery, what should they do? Well, I mean, they said what? They're going to have $100 million, this this fund that they're going to use for current students, and then they're also going to use it for future students, is my understanding? Yeah. Okay. Well, first, my thought was, this dispels that myth that the North was this magical slave-free place. Oh, that's not a okay? myth. That's misinformation. Anybody who thought that the whole misinformation, a lot of, was, was I think there, driving off I think slave there's labor. Quite a few, I think there's quite a few people who think that... Oh, yeah, you could just run to the north and you were free. 
It just proves how racist as a whole this country is. But my whole question was like, so what does that mean? I need to know. Okay, great. $100 million. You, you gotta, it's some form of reparations. If it is reparations, why are we just using it for current and future? This should be given to some of these students from the past. That's what they need to do. And who's monitoring this fund? And how is this money going to be dispersed? I need more. That's all I kept thinking. I need more. Great. You've got this money. You're going to use it to right your wrongs or try to right your wrongs or show that you're doing something on behalf of black people because you clearly weren't for them in the beginning of all this and your st school was built on racism. Great. Now, how are we going to... That? I just need to make sure that this is actually going to be done. It's one thing to say it. Again, help. It's one thing to say it. It's a whole nother thing to how are we actually going to implement this and who's going to be monitoring it to making sure it's actually getting done. It's time for me to give you guys a book. All right. It's time for me to give you guys a book written by Sandy Darity. I think I've talked to you about it before. I want you guys to read this book to understand the situation. All righty now. Okay, the name of the book is From Here to Equality, Reparations for Black Americans in the 20th Century. Sandy Darity, book that I read, book that I really loved. In this book, Professor Darity, who's a brilliant man from the University of North Carolina, talks about reparations or slavery as not a North-South uh, thing or even an American thing. Global economies depended on African slavery. A lot of what was going on in financial hubs in Great Britain, a lot of the colors the fabrics, uh, the raw materials that were being exported by the United States obviously came from slave labor. So when you're talking about reparations from slave labor, there is no safe region in the United States. If I told you right now that there were companies in the North, <clears throat> newspaper companies, communications companies, who were benefiting from the fact that inside of their newspapers that they owned all over the place, they were putting in ads to buy slaves, ads to sell slaves, um, ads about runaway slaves and all kinds of mm -hmm. stuff like that. They were taking all of that money, all right? There were insurance companies, huge ones that still exist today in some form or fashion that were taking on insurance on slaves. Slavery was the driving economic force of America until industrialization came around. And when something is the driving industrial, uh, the driving uh, economic force of a country, you can't be free of it. Like right now, if you live in America, you can't be free of Wall Street. Wall Street helps dictate prices and helps dictate uh, the ebbs and flows of things, right? You can't be free from inflation. You can't be free from these economic factors. And slavery was the number one economic factor in America at that time right here. And I would say it was the number one economic factor in the world at one time, all of this free labor. So Harvard is not going to have to look very far for its part in this. And I'm not talking about directly do its direct part. It, it was... All these financial institutions in these places like that, they were passively complicit. Like it was hard mm -hmm. not to. So the burden, the 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 debt owed to Black Americans, and Professor Darity does a fantastic job in making this case. The debt owed to Black Americans is really that it's a debt incurred by everyone. I'm glad Harvard is doing this. I'm glad they're looking at this. I can't say that I'm mad about it, but what I need them to, I need, in order for me not to be skeptical about it, they're going to have to be serious about it. And if they're serious, they're going to, mm -hmm. they're going to see mm -hmm. that it's a might more than a hundred million dollars that it's going to take. I'm not, I'm saying that that's what they're using to study it, but Harvard's going to have to be very uh, intentional about this. And by the way, one way that they can do this is to invest more into young minds that might want to use the institution. I know somebody went to Harvard and told me that in every single dorm in Harvard, there's a mess hall. Then you got your own cafeteria in every single dorm. And when you're studying there, you can always go get a cookie. You can always go get something. Even in the late nights, you can get like, there's, there's something called X missions at Harvard. They don't want you to leave. They don't want you to drop out from an Ivy League school. They do everything to make sure that you succeed because succeeding at a place like that, that those places are more uh, like success dungeons than they are colleges. If you go to Harvard and you drop out, they feel bad because they don't want to lose people and have dropout rates go up. They need you to graduate with Harvard, go out into the world and be a success. There are very few institutions like that that are just just 
pushing forward young black minds and not letting them fail. And the best thing that Harvard could do, the best thing is to become one of those places that reaches into communities all over the place with kids who are bright enough to have gone to that school but might not have the right social circumstances to go to that school and make sure they have the opportunity. That plus cut me a check. Okay, um, getting a little freaky here. Rach, have you seen this TikTok? Yes. Rach, you're, uh, you're in a racial relationship. <sighs> if it ain't racial... It's interracial. You know what I'm saying? <gasps> interracial Lindsay. Um, have, <laughs> have you seen this TikTok on Twitter where these girls who are black let white men grab them and pull them like they're slaves or something? And then a little voice says, Massa, have you seen this? Sadly, I have. Your thoughts? I don't have any. Wait a minute. You, just, you gotta have thoughts. My these type of videos, these type of actions, these type of people make it so hard for us in interracial relationships. Interracial. As if we all as if we all think this way. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> It's so ridiculous. Like you make it so hard for us. You know how like when we talk about this with with someone who's um a Christian does something or says something and it's just wild and you're like gosh you making it you're making it so hard for us. Like I can't defend that behavior. Like this is why nobody like this is why people will jump and say that they're crazy. Like this is why people talk about people in interracial relationships. When you do something like this, you it just they think that we all feel this way and we don't. We don't. I wish I would let Brian grab me and put his hands on me. I wish I would do a video to this type. No, no, it's not funny. It's insensitive. It, this is why you can't take slavery out of schools. I was having this conversation with someone teachers in Texas where they were telling me about a school district that's that doesn't talk about slavery or passes they're already starting to do this I mean I knew about it but I didn't realize it was like really really happening anyways this is why you can't do it because people don't talk about it in the same way they don't realize its importance its effect it gets watered down and then you have people making silly videos like this like calling their white boyfriends massa and laughing at it and thinking it's funny I I I can't. What if this is the, no what thoughts. if this is this an acceptable kink? Because we always talk about kink shaming people. Because remember, we did this. No. We did the same thing with Mano. Well, then here's the thing. Then, so we talked about Mano, and we, rightfully so, Mano and the slave play, right? And the question is going to become whether or not slave play is an acceptable kink. Because that seems like what? Because we don't want to kink shame anyone, oh. right? Because right now, right now, if I told, if somebody told you right now that they jacked off while smelling pennies all day, you'd be like, "Hey, it was weird," but that's for you. You know what I'm saying? Like the question, and I'm being serious about this. I think that this is disgusting, and I think that this is vile, and I think that this is is something that um that hints at a deep seated misunderstanding of hu the human condition when you do this. But there are a lot of kinks out there that I know niggas that like to get kicked in their balls. They ball stomp, but it's that's not offensive. That's not offensive. So you ask where you draw the line mm. when you stop and you start to give someone a side eye or condemn whatever it is that they're doing. That is offensive. You are like it, it's it's reverting back to a time. I, just the fact that you are letting this white man call you massa and you're laughing mm. at it. This that that's a totally different type of thing. You're, you're not with that's it. Totally different. All right. Uh, I don't understand this young generation. I thought, and when you when you sent it, I thought it was gonna be one video, not no, no, it's ten. Catching on, it's catching on. What are you, talk, what are you talking about, Rachel? You know, Brian, we, we're gonna do the video. I love it. And the moment that he turns around, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna punch him. Yeah, like you, like like. But but see, hold <laughs> the thing. Why are you, why is Brian catching strays for something that somebody else did? Why <laughs> like like leave Brian alone? Brian is the type because you know what I wonder. I wonder whose idea it was. That's what I wonder in these videos. Did the white guys come to these sisters and go, let's do these videos? And if the sisters no. came to them and said, let's do it, if, if I'm a white dude, I'm like, I'm not doing that. Like, I, 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 the fact that there's nobody that went, I'm not going to do that. 
the fact that the sisters were okay with it and the fact that the white guys were okay with it and we did do it and like I'm not doing that. The white guys would say, well, I think it's the, I personally think it's the black women that are initiating it because you can, t- the, the, the white men look confused by the whole thing. It looks like they were like, hold me like this and this, and let me do this TikTok. But would you would probably have white people, the white guys would probably say like, well, I thought it was okay because she did it. She thought it was fine. It was fine for me. Like, this is where we got to step up and be like, no, no, no. We, draw a line. we draw a line right in the kinky sand. Punk motherfuckers. Don't, don't, don't fuck with me. Uh, no. Have you seen this video of the white girl rapping the little baby verse from Drake's Wants and Needs and everyone and now now she's the she's the next thing I saw it I saw it I saw cool it. little video I don't get it don't get it is it a cool video It's just a video that gets people excited I I think it's just another thing but the fact that why are people excited why are people excited Oh Rachel black people want to be accepted so bad. Why are people excited? She's doing every rap girl. Why oh. it was able to recall every lyric to a little baby's verse uh, on Drake's song. This, so this, so th- it's just like anytime somebody shows, anytime people show any sort of respect for our culture, it feels like they're saying yes, you guys are okay. And when it comes, is from, that respect? Well, it's the fact that she knows the song word for word, a lot of people would say that that means that she took the time to learn the song, and she did it with took it to the took it to the O from. Um, from uh, King Vaughn, which I would never want her to do because that song is a big warning shot in this whole back and forth between O'Block and Tukaville that we'll talk more about on Hip Hop Homicides in September. But I'll tell you this. There was another girl back in the day who didn't mimic a rap. She actually rapped. She rapped like Busta Rhymes' part. I remember. remember her? And mm-hmm. she rapped Busta Rhymes' part to look at me now and she went hyper viral was hyper and she ended up on the ellen mm-hmm. show i remember people were talking about the fact that she ended up on the ellen show because she rapped it and then she became she's a she's a music person she has she yeah she went to a school of music to school of music I remember she had that and i was thinking to myself did ellen have buster rhymes on the show to do look at me now the people who like made the song did she have them no, on she there? Have, she did. De- she doesn't have no, no. She's viral people that go on. No. Right. So plus, like, plus didn't come. It's just it it. It's just weird to me sometimes when mimicking black culture seems to be a way to get on, while initiated or inventing black culture, uh, is always met with with like care controversy and things of that nature you know not to say that being a rapper hasn't been good for Drake and Little Baby because it has been but I'm just I'm floored by I, I, I get that people see the video and they think that the video is cool I'm just I, I'm floored by how obsessed people are with it and it seems like for 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 brothers to really get into white women white women just gotta do the least they just gotta do the least hey jiggle one ass cheek you know what I mean like do across it just seems like sometimes and look this is phenomenal yes. when a white boy starts dancing and he's doing the whole thing or the, the, the blue eyed soul and all of that we we like oh ooh, ooh, hold on you don't see me do it ooh, 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 ooh. wait why are you only going to one side why are you only going to one side, on bring it back. side. <laughs> <laughs> you literally are doing the work this is the only like, arm that arm? does it this is the only arm that does it uh, but when a white boy does that we get all excited because we feel like it's a white endorsement, and niggas care too much about the white endorsement, man. Yes, Look, they feel like they're down. I'm, they feel like, oh, they're down with us. I'm not gonna hate yeah. on her moment or whatever like that, but like you know, man, them them are, them are police Y'all wives, chill man. Out. Them are police wives. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're, they're, they're I just kept waiting for force. something else to happen. I kept waiting for <clears throat> something else to happen in the video when I watched it, and then I was like, <clears throat> so she just set the lyrics. Well, now she didn't even freestyle. She didn't like what what are we applauding here? That she knew the lyrics to a song? I don't get it. It's not a cool video. It's her rapping. Mm. Well now not even rapping. She says which her she's saying which song do you karaoke. She says which song do you guys want me to do next? She put that up on her thing, so she's gonna this is her th- this is her new thing. She 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 karaoke. Feminine. Can we just call it what it is? Yeah. It was karaoke. Yeah. It wasn't her voice. It wasn't her words. Well, karaoke is your own voice, so respect karaoke. 
Uh, oh yeah, sorry, my bad. It is. It is. So it's even worse than that. Rachel. <laughs> oh no. Donnie, play my song. <laughs> animal, animal, animal game. Animal, animal games. Animal, animal, animal games. Animal, animal games. That's the Animal Games theme song right there. <laughs> <laughs> Trudy, Trudy, it's time for animal games. All right. Who put the cow noise in there? <laughs> That's all Donnie. <laughs> That's the animal games theme song. All right, Donnie Beecham. All right, it's on you. Take I it away whenever you're ready. The first initial wait, wait, animal wait. games. Rach is still <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> right, let me let me explain the rules. <laughs> We were listening. We get started. I thought we were listening to Mel back. Oh my God. Um, so I got six questions total, and uh, I figure we should split the questions up into two rounds. The first round will be multiple choice. Second round, you'll have 15 seconds to answer. I'll play a song. When that song ends, those 15 seconds are up. So the first. Wait, are we all answering the, qu- the same no, question? No, no, no. Just for each of you. Who wants to go first? I guess. Okay. I'll go question. first, of course. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. The first category of animal games is birds. Okay, so the uh <laughs> the first question we comes from Brooke. this after this week. Man. Mm-hmm. Name the bird that we use in our legal eagle sound effect. What is mm-hmm. the actual bird? I'll I'll play the, the sound real quick for you. Mm-hmm. Now, the options oh, are gosh. Mm-hmm. A, a harpy eagle, mm-hmm. a, a bald eagle, mm-hmm. a, a red-tailed hawk, or a bearded vulture. I'm going to go a harpy eagle. Going to go harpy eagle. You stand with that mm-hmm. answer? Okay. I do. You are wrong. It is a red-tailed Damn. hawk. Yes. It's not even an eagle. Fuck. It's yes. It's a hawk noise. Yes. Jesus, I had no clue. Okay, so let's go about the good. Fuck. That was tough. It was a hard one. It's not even really like, whatever, Donnie. I, I protest the question, but it's I love animal <laughs> games. I'm so excited. Is it time for anybody else now? Yeah, it's Rachel's turn. Yes. Did you think it started an interview? <laughs> what is this? All right, this question comes from Davy Jones. A group of owls is called oh. a parliament, a colony. A watch or a brood? <sighs> can we phone a friend? No. Hell or, no. Or do, or can you eliminate? Or can you eliminate two? No. Like 50? You know, that would have been good. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go with a watch. Mm, no, it is a parliament. Very Damn. Damn, that was my second yeah. one. Okay. Oh, oh, Every game is fucking it. us up. All right, Trudy. It's on you. Oh, Lord. Okay. From Wendy Simone, what is the most common bird in North America? Your options are oh. yellow rumped warbler, the dark eyed junco, a chipping sparrow, or the morning dove? What the fuck? <sighs> Can you say the first one again? The yellow rumped warbler. <laughs> I don't even know. It's not pigeons. Um, I'm going to go with, wait, what was the last one? Morning dove. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to go with the morning dove because that's the only one that I know what it actually is. Oh, for three. What the answer's was the, that? Damn. It's the dark eyed Junko. They have an estimated population of 600. What is that, a crow? Junko. J U N C O. A Junko? All right. Junior college, like I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the next round, you guys are gonna have 15 Junior seconds college. to answer the question. I'll okay. play, uh, Can you use help? Van says no. All right, so uh, we'll start off with Van again. I'm gonna play the okay. song after I ask the question, and once Let's the go. song ends, okay, cool. So the question is from Teddy B. Name four flightless birds. Okay. A turkey, an ostrich, a chicken, and a penguin. 
Okay. Uh, are turkeys flightless? Hold they on, can't really hold fly. On. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll I'll go with that. Oh, animal, animal, animal games, animal, animal games. <laughs> Woo! What on the board, Rach? Where you at? Is Rachel's? I, 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 but chickens, chickens can fly a little bit. No, not like that. Not like yeah. talking about. Yeah, I think turkeys can fly the same amount as chickens, which is like a, it's like a, a soft landing, but not actual flying. Oh, Rachel. Hey, that's one on the board. Animal games. It's Rachel's time. It's Rachel's turn. Let's go. Uh, I did this wrong. I meant to have this this next question for Van because it, it's harder. I'm sorry, Rachel. This is a tough one. <laughs> Are you, you ready for it? <laughs> yes. This is from Davis Wallace. Name three of the seven major groups of dinosaurs. So oh, she's out of here. You get, <laughs> you get, you get, you get oh, bonus points. Games. You get <laughs> animal games. You get bonus points if you get more than three. Like, go ahead, Rachel. Let's, let's go. Groups. Groups of dinosaurs, Rachel. Groups. Yeah, yeah. Groups of yeah. dinosaurs. Go if I it. name a dinosaur that's in that group, does that count? Nigga, fuck no. No. The question is very clear. You got a name. I don't even know. I don't know one group of dinosaurs. Get out of I here, only Donnie. know the names of dinosaurs. Let me call my nephew. No. no. Why would we call the nephew? <laughs> I like, think you should institute on a friend. We, we, maybe next week, I, but I right now this, we're doing in this animal case, games. If you can do it quickly, in this case, because it's so tough. Donnie, what the fuck are you it. doing? I'm Donnie. Don, like, Donnie. Donnie. Okay. Donnie, what the, the hell? Wait, but, but wait. Wait, a carnivore? Is that right? No. A carnivore? <laughs> Herbivores, herb, <laughs> herb of something. No, no, those are good guesses, but that's that, that's not right. Wrong. Pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so See, the seven groups. More. You could have said one of these three: theropods, sauropods, oh, yeah, this is... stegosaurs, and chylosaurs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or nithopods. I could have named a steggy. Theratopsians. Yeah. Or pachycephalosaurs. By the way, I'm gonna Come be honest with you. Now. Rachel misses that. This is advanced. I don't think that I think that that question is too advanced for animal games. Just to let you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. Donnie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Donnie, I think that question. I should have <laughs> said I don't believe in dinosaurs, and well, uh, so I don't have to answer. You're a Christian, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, actually do believe in dinosaurs. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to. Six thousand years old. All right, uh, Trudy's turn. All right, last question. This is coming from Noel. Trudy, name as many birds as you can. That are capable of hovering. Of hovering? <laughs> Does flying count? I'm gonna yes. just name birds. Hover, a Trudy. pigeon, a puffin, a dove, a hummingbird, a. Terrible. She naming every bird she knows. <laughs> a falcon, a hawk. A... Okay, Terrible. okay, you're good. So that was a trick question, and you still got it right. There's only one bird that can. The hummingbird. Hover, and it's a hummingbird. <laughs> All right, okay, Trudy. so now, so now. <laughs> We have to now. Do we do what do we do? Do we add up the animal games points? Well, I'm out. Or we we add up the points, right? It's one to one this week. Me and Trudy tied. One. Yeah, one on one one to one. Me and Trudy tied in the inaugural animal games. I gotta be honest with you. Um, this is invigorating. <laughs> Dude, this is the most fun animal games is. Rachel, you gotta bring more enthusiasm to animal games. Like, and I'm telling you guys something. right now, y'all shouldn't have started with birds. You know how I feel about birds. I feel like this was cruel. It, the odds were already <laughs> against me, and I don't. I I need a different category. By the way, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. For next week's animal games, we need sixth grade animal questions. Like, nigga, I look like John Hammond to you. Like talking about some Jurassic dinosaurs. Like, what are you like? What are you? What are you talking about? Like, we need sixth grade animal questions. All right, animal games number one. Trudy, I got a point on the board. Trudy's got a point on the board. We'll revisit this at the end of the month. Donnie is the best host in the world. Give it up for your host, Donnie Beachman Jr. Again, right? Yeah, Donnie. Give it up fantastic. for your host, Donnie Beachman Jr. Bows. For uh, next week's category, I say we do marine life. So, thought warriors, marine life. Give me marine life questions. All right. Um, okay. let's go to mailbag. Mailbag time. Time to read your letters and then we'll reply to them. Oh, it's mailbag time. Write us with your queries 
and we'll chime in from bird now on reddit rachel how would van fare as the bachelor and van how would rachel do at tmz um rachel's rachel would be a fantastic addition to tmz but she would be out at tmz within probably about four weeks because why uh you're just not gonna you're not gonna take the shit you're not you're not you're not <laughs> Rachel, like I'm, I'm more of a. I use honey a little bit more. Rachel's in there. Rachel's, 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 Rachel's Rachel's getting it. Rachel's getting busy. Look, I mean, I took shit at TMZ that Rachel would never take. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. And it wasn't that they were doing it to me; they were just doing it. Like Rachel with a soup kitchen, Harvey. So Harvey made the soup kitchen. (laughs) You know what I mean? Uh, But it, but if, but if, but if, if that didn't happen, if they didn't uh, piss her off, she'd be a fantastic. She'd be fantastic anywhere. Um, thank you. I think you'd be a terrible bachelor. Hmm. I, I, I think I probably <laughs> would too. <laughs> and I think, but I say that in a in a loving way, uh-huh. right? Just I dealt with things that I don't think you would deal oh, with, and I think they would cut your. And I think they would. You would cut uh, your season would get cut short. <laughs> I don't think that there's any way you'd last 10 weeks. Uh-huh. I think you'd be like, nope, her, that's who I want. I'm not even about, you'd be Claire. You'd be oh, Claire. Chip and, oh, did you see that they're doing the, the, the Chippendale movies coming out? No, I didn't. It's a Chippendale see this. live action movie coming out. Oh, that's amazing. They got to get together and go to the Chippendale live action movie. That's Chip amazing. Yeah, no, maybe you'd be okay because you would be Claire. You'd say, I knew it. Mm-hmm. You'd find the one. You wouldn't play any games. You wouldn't you wouldn't do the dates. You you would the dinner time dates, you're not supposed to eat the food. You'd be like, bring me a hot meal. I want to eat. I want to drink. I want to get to know this person. I want to do my kind of date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you would go off script. Yeah. Yeah. Good question, by the way. It won't work. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's go, Donnie. Next, <laughs> Next one. <laughs> the lady from NYC on IG asks, what unsolicited advice would you give each other? Good question. Uh, unsolicited advice? Yeah. Unsolicited advice that we give each other. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know either. I don't think I... That's a tough question. I mean, that's a good question, but that's a tough question. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a tough one. I'd say... Uh, you know, maybe, you know, just like basically just watch your back, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Just on some real shit, my G. Just watch your back, nigga. Don't, don't. Get out of here with that. I'm fine. Just watch now. Nah, watch your back, nigga. Niggas come. <laughs> niggas come to the motherfucking situation. You know what I'm saying? Watch your back, my G. Stay up. You know what I'm saying? Do your thing, man. It's just tough on these streets. Well, Donnie, me? what's the next question? <laughs> All right. Next one is from Austin Birdquest. What's the most random small world connection you have ever had? Oh, uh, I got one. So some years ago, I am talking to my friend Cameron Fife about doing this show. And Cameron Fife introduces me to all these people. Uh, One of the guys is a videographer from Dallas. And when (laughs) I was looking to shoot content, this is years ago. This is like 2015. When I was looking to shoot content for Actively Black this year, I said, hey, who can shoot content with me? And this guy is named Shaheen. He, uh, He goes, I'll do it. And then Rachel goes, yeah, you should have him do it. And I'm like, okay, well, I know this guy. Yeah, I you know, forgot that you do this. Like, yeah, we do this. We work together. So me and him go to Sammy's camera to get the stuff to shoot the stuff. And while we're going there, we're talking. He goes, yeah, I, I know Rachel. I dated Rachel in high school. I'm like, what? It's like, yeah, she writes about me in the book. I dated the guy that's the half Persian guy or whatever. That's me. I met this dude in LA like literally five, six years ago. might have been longer. That might have been... What, 2015 or something? Um, I met him just on a random mm-hmm. situation with my boy Cameron, and that guy was Rachel's high school boyfriend. He told me that she was the first person 
that he really ever, he said they spent a lot of time exploring each other's bodies and getting to know each other under the stars. <laughs> this is this part's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you read the book, you'll know that. Right. It's quite the opposite, actually. Right, but... um. But yeah, that is the most random. And seriously, in life, that's the most random small small world encounter I've ever had. I uh, that's a good one, and I'm just gonna stick with that one because it's a uh, it's such a small world. But I think that people don't think because again, people met me on the Bachelor or Bachelorette, no. so I think it's even when you're like, oh wait, you know Rachel from a different time before, and oh, how do you know this person of all people? This person, it's like. You get a sneak peek into my world, uh, pre Bachelor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. I want that one too. I'm, I'm, I'm t- taking that story. All right. What else we got? Last one. All right. Here for the right reasons on Reddit asks, who is someone you used to look up to but has since disappointed you? Ben Carson. Oh, I just said it. Sage. Yeah. Ben Carson. Easy. Uh. uh, uh Understood. Read Ben Carson's like, read, read Ben Carson's book when I was a kid. Ben Carson is still one of the one of the greatest greatest surgeons in the history of neurosurgeons. But uh, I just Ben Carson for sure. Just with the way you don't even went. have to explain yep. it. Who would have known that that's what he would become? Life was I mean, funny. My goodness. I wear gifted hands when I was in <clears> middle school, and all of that stuff is still true about him. But God damn. It's people out here. I'm sure some people would say Herschel Walker. Hersh, Hersh. All right, that's enough of uh, of mailbag. Rachel, do you have? Thank you, Donnie. Thank you, Trudy, for mailbag. Even though you didn't do anything, Trudy. Rachel, do you have an unexpected ally of the week? No. Yeah, neither do I. I don't. I think that when we don't have an unexpected ally of the week, just because there wasn't one, it's hard to find or because we're just not in the mood simply by what's happening this week, we just need to uplift somebody in the community or like have like a, just just, just an, not even an unexpected ally, just uh, somebody we're just like, who's doing good, just who's doing something. That's what we should okay. do. Ingle, we gotta bring something else to the segment. Inglewood Barbie is the person then out there in Chicago, go out there and support her. Uh, I already talked about Pastor Brooks. She's feeding homeless people. She's giving kids shelter. Inglewood Barbie would be my ally there. But there are a lot of people out there. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people out there doing the work. Just tapping with people doing your work in your communities, man. All right. Um, Rach, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Take your thing caps off, but do not stop learning. I am Van Lathan Jr. And I'm Rachel and Lindsay. Bye, guys. Take us out on Animal Games. This is music. Yeah! Animal, animal, animal games. Animal, animal games. Animal, animal, animal games. Animal, animal games. That's the animal games theme song right there.